Hi, my name is Frank Schaefer, and I've been watching Elon Musk's rise to prominence in our culture with alarm. It seems insane to me that we've more or less turned over the U.S. space program to him. I've watched him use Starlink to undermine Ukraine's assault on Russian forces, particularly the Russian Navy, when he turned off Starlink so that their torpedoes attacking the Russian Navy that was trying to stop grain exports to the world was foiled, even though he has allowed Starlink to be used at other times. Today, Media Matters, one of the most trusted sources in news reporting in the world, quoted by everyone everywhere when they are looking for evidence of far right conspiracy theorizing, basically the terror press from the right, Nazis, Ku Klux Klan, fellow travelers with all kinds of domestic terrorist plots, post-January 6 threats and all the rest of it, insane people from the evangelical big God business subculture, rants against gay people, etc. Media Matters is where you find what has been said on religious radio, on far-right talk shows, on weird websites, the circulation of Hindu nationalist ideas, Christian nationalist ideas, weird, horrible American Zionism support of far-right groups in Israel, you name it, Media Matters is where you get the facts. In fact, I've been to a Media Matters conference several times and know the leaders in that organization. I have incredible respect for them. I have met Nobel laureates at these events. I have met the most respected journalists in the world there who follow Media Matters. Why am I making such a big point? Because today they're writing, and forgive me for looking down here, but I'll be reading, that under Elon Musk and new CEO Linda Yacanaro's leadership, ex formerly Twitter, has reinstated known white nationalists and any Semites on its platforms and permitted advertisements from major companies to appear on pro Hitler accounts. Musk has even engaged with some of the reinstated anti Semitic accounts and amplified their conspiracy theories that were used to push anti-Semitism. And now Musk has engaged in a right-wing hate campaign against the Anti-Defamation League and indicated that he would likely sue the organization, claiming that he has, quote, no choice as the ADL has, quote, been trying to kill this platform by falsely accusing it and me of being anti-Semitic, end quote. Right-wing media fixtures have been encouraging him to fight the ADL and other, quote, activists since he took over Twitter in October of 2022. You know, back in 1920, the anti-Semite pro-Hitler car company magnate Henry Ford published a regular newspaper urging people into anti-Semitic rants, siding with Germany as it rose later, and we've seen this before. Father Kuglin, who was this Roman Catholic anti-Semite pro-Hitler fascist who had a radio show, it seems that Musk is vying to take up that mantle. Now, Musk only has one rule in life, and that is if anybody opposes him or gets in his way, whether it's the SEC or the federal government regulating online activity, whatever it might be, then they become his enemy. He urged people to vote for Republicans because some Democrats had questioned some of his methods. That's how touchy and unbalanced a man he is with his billions to throw around. Michael E. Jones, a radical traditionalist Catholic, thanked Musk for reactivating his account on November 23, 2022, and has since used his platform to push dangerous anti-Semitic rhetoric, anti-feminist personality, Carl Benjamin, also known as Sargon Akkad, has used his reinstated account to push white nationalist ideology and amplify the far-right message board for Chan to hundreds of thousands of followers. Musk seemingly reversed the white nationalist Stefan Molyneux's suspension after users called for its reinstatement. White nationalist and Holocaust denier Nick Fuentes was seemingly reinstated to Twitter on January 29 and then quickly resuspended on January 25. White nationalist and anti Semite Patrick Howley was seemingly reinstated to Twitter on January 24. On May 29, Musk reportedly reinstated the account of former congressional candidate 
Paul Nealon, who, according to the Southern Poverty Law Center, is, quote, one of the most high profile advocates of terrorism in America today, on and on and on. At the same time, our federal government is in hock to Elon Musk for Starlink and his communications network, which, from my point of view, is a threat to our national security because he's clearly unstable. And now he has declared himself as someone who is going to take on the Anti-Defamation League and sick his sick in the ill sense of mentally ill, unstable millions of followers on them who are now harassing ADL people. And so when you look at what he's doing, December 2022, Washington Post reported that the Advertisements from dozens of major brands were appearing on white nationalist extremist Twitter accounts, etc. Stand with the ADL, stand against Elon Musk, stand up for people like Media Matters who take on these titans of industry and others. Stand up for our right as Americans to not be bossed around and organized by billionaires whose clout far outstrips their brains and their emotional stability. In this particular case, whatever happens to the ADL, whatever terror is committed against them, whatever violence by Elon Musk's demented followers occurs is at his door. It belongs to him. And I call on everyone in the federal government to reevaluate the federal government and the military's relationship to Elon Musk. What are you doing in bed with someone who is vilifying the Anti-Defamation League and basically giving a platform to the most hate-filled people in our culture. Thank you, my name is Frank Schaefer.